guys, Miss Hickman here. Welcome to Science with Miss Hickman. I wanted to start by saying it's been so long and I haven't seen you in forever. And this whole coronavirus thing is a little weird for school to keep going. Um, it must be awkward for you guys and for your families. And I just want to say that um, I understand and that I miss you guys a whole bunch and that I want you guys to still have fun science stuff even though you're at home. So I thought I would start uh, a YouTube channel or something uh, to give you guys different science experiments at least once a week. So that way you guys can still have fun. Um, so today we're gonna start with a really easy one. I call it fishing for ice cubes and uh, some materials you'll need if you want to pause the video. We need ice cubes, uh, a glass of room temperature water, uh, some kitchen twine, or more commonly in the household, some yarn. That's what I'm using today, I'm using yarn. Some scissors and some salt. Alrighty, so we're going to start with our room temperature glass of water. And we're gonna put our ice cubes in it. It doesn't matter how many you put in, it's totally up to you. Another optional thing before you put regular ice cubes in is you can freeze food colored ice cubes if you're going to play this game with a sibling or something. So you guys can have your own colors and you can see them easier in the water. Uh, but it's just myself today, so I'm going to put the ice in here and be careful not to make a huge mess. So just plop them in and unless you really want to get messy and have fun. Okay, so I'm gonna take my yarn and I'm gonna cut the bottom bit off because it's all knotted up. You want to have about six inches of yarn. You can measure it out or you can just eyeball it like I'm doing. And set the rest of the yarn aside. I want you to start by trying to pick up the ice cubes with this yarn. Put it in the water. Really push it down maybe. Try and pick it up. Is it working for you guys? It's not working for me. So that's okay. It's not going to work without another ingredient. So what you want to do next is we're going to put the string back in the water. Kind of just lay it across the top. Just let it go over on the side like this. And then what you're going to take is your salt and you're going to like generously put a bunch of salt on the top of your ice cubes and your string. So we're going to put it there and we're going to wait a little bit. So you want to wait about a minute or two before you try anything else and we'll see if it changes what happens because you can't fish if you can't pick anything up, right? So we'll set our scissors inside and stuff. So during this experiment, I want you to be thinking, why would we have to add salt to it? Why can't it just work with the string and the ice and the regular water? Why does it have to be salt water? And um, if you're going to be doing it with your sibling, oh, we should see how many ice cubes you can get out. Who can get the most out? Uh, you can even play with your aunt, uncle, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, friend who's over. Don't have friends over. It's coronavirus. Six feet apart. Um, yeah, so it's been about a minute. We're going to wait another minute to do this. And that's the fun about science. Not everything is immediate gratification, right? Uh, for my fifth graders, I want to say I miss you a whole bunch. And it's been a whole month almost since I've seen you. For my eighth graders, it's been even longer. And I miss you guys so much. It's probably so weird not having to finish the last year of middle school or the last year of elementary school for my fifth graders before going to a whole different school. So I'm here for you guys. Let's do science together. Okay, it's been about 
minute and a half to two minutes. Try and lift it up. See if we can fish for ice cubes. <gasps> Holy cow, how many do we have? Okay, we got a whole bunch. We got one, two, three, four, and five. How many guys did you get? Leave it in the comments if you got it. Wow, okay. Now try and take it off. Wow, it really froze on there. I wonder why that is. If you can see, it still has a whole chunk of ice on there. Wow. Okay, now see if you can go back to grabbing it. It's not working for me. So maybe we can try just sprinkling some salt on there. What I mean by sprinkling is just a tiny bit. So pour some over a container, just so it doesn't get all over the table. Just sprinkle it on top. I'm gonna put the rest of the container for later. My cat Banjo wants to say hi. I'll show you guys Banjo. This is Banjo. She's an old fart. She's like, are you 12 now? She's not very friendly to other people, but she likes us. So that's Banjo for you guys. We have a puppy now too, but he's asleep right now, so I won't show you. All right, I'm gonna try and lift it up. It didn't quite pick it up. So why is that? Why does it have to wait for a little bit? So, I want to show you guys, I have this really cool book that I'm going to be using for the science labs. It's Kitchen Science Labs for Kids, and it has so many awesome things. So that's where I'm getting it from, just so I can give credit to the creator. Uh, so, the science behind the fun, let's read it. So normally, ice melts and water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, which a lot of you guys probably should have known that, uh, fifth graders and eighth graders. Um, or as eighth graders might know it as as well as zero degrees Celsius. Uh, so adding salt, however, lowers the temperature at which the ice, um, I'm gonna put this in front of me, the ice can melt and water can freeze. So uh, the ice melts faster with the salt on it. As some of you guys have probably seen if it snows outside or it's icy and people put big chunks of salt on the road or the sidewalk, uh, that can help melt it faster but also allows water to freeze easier. Uh, so in this experiment, the salt makes the ice surrounding the string to begin to melt, but it's stealing the heat from the surrounding water and the cold water then refreezes around the string, which allows you to lift it from the water in the glass. So that's why we had a big chunk of ice at the end when I tried taking it off because it had the ice cube had frozen around the string. Did it work the same with you guys? Did it not work at all? What do you think happened? If it didn't work, how could we fix it? Another thing is that different chemicals change the freezing point of water. So water is a chemical, salt is a chemical, pretty, pretty much everything is a chemical. So different chemicals put in water can change the freezing point of it. And salt can thaw ice at 15 degrees Fahrenheit or negative nine degrees Celsius. But at zero degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 18 degrees Celsius, it won't do anything. Other de-icing chem de chemicals they add to roads can work at much colder temperatures down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 29 degrees Celsius. I don't wanna be outside when it's that cold, honestly. <laughs> so one thing I want you guys to try on your own is does this experiment work when using sugar? And what other things could you try? What else could you try? It was really fun doing science with you guys and I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you have any uh, science things, any home experiments you wanna try out that um, I haven't done yet, please let me know. You can either email me with the school district email or you can leave it in the comments or you can even ask uh, either Miss Quillen for eighth graders or Miss Martindale for fifth graders. So yeah, I missed you guys. Happy science and stay safe out there, okay? Bye.